If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. As the Crimson Blade passed through the old master, Luke watched as his mentor's cloak crumbled to the floor, leaving no trace of the Jedi behind. Not understanding what he had just witnessed, the young Skywalker was filled with despair, and with a shout, he began firing with wild abandon. His friends called for him to leave and return to the ship, but there was no satiating the rage he felt within himself, as he now had lost everything he cared for, from his home to his new mentor. As a few more stormtroopers fell to his blaster, a voice echoed from the beyond, Run, Luke, run. The red veil of rage lifted, and his mind came to clarity, shaken back to his senses by the voice of his old master, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Later, it was the moment of truth. All other fighters had been destroyed, and the Death Star turbo blasters were down. Luke's X-Wing was the only one left within the trench of the Death Star. Again, the voice of Ben Kenobi came to him, a whisper in space. Not quite understanding his feelings, Luke would turn off his targeting computer and reached out with his senses. No longer a mere rebel pilot, but now a fledging Jedi. However, it wouldn't be until Luke was on the brink of death on the ice planet of Hoth that Ben Kenobi would once again return to him. But this time, his voice was accompanied by the transparent blue image of Obi-Wan. Since then, we have been introduced to the idea of Force Ghosts, and they have been a staple in the Star Wars mythos. This video, though, won't be about Force Ghosts. If you'd like to know more about those, I definitely recommend checking out our video about the differences between Force Ghosts and Sith Spirits. In that video, we briefly mentioned two different worlds and spaces, the Netherworld of the Force, and a place known simply as chaos. The afterlife is something that is very briefly touched upon in Jedi and Sith lore, and is very, very rare to be touched upon at all. Sith mostly avoid the mention of it due to them chasing immortality as their main focus. Many Jedi, on the other hand, speak primarily of becoming one with the Force, without going into too much detail on exactly what this means. It could be a possibility that many Jedi may not know what exactly happens when they die except for those who may have sought out the Force Priestesses, or made it an effort to study this specific kind of lore. Today though, we would like to explore a little bit more in depth what these two worlds are by taking a look at exactly what we know about them. What do we know about the heaven and the hell of the Star Wars galaxy? To begin, it is important to note that the netherworld of the Force and the world between worlds as seen in Star Wars Rebels are two separate places. The netherworld of the Force, also known as the Mist Beyond, is best equated to our world's understanding of heaven, or actually more akin to Elysium. In our world's mythology of Elysium, it is a place of eternal peace and rest for heroic warriors, while the netherworld is very much the same idea, and a very similar concept. When a Jedi dies, their force essence becomes one with the cosmic force, and their souls are sent to the mist beyond. Jedi who have mastered the techniques taught by the Force Priestesses are able to send their essence back to the physical plane as a manifestation of the Cosmic Force, which is where we get our understanding of Force Ghosts. Not much information is available on what exactly the Netherworld is like, however, as not many who have been there ever speak on it, but it is said that it is the ultimate reward for one's affinity to the light side. It is a place of peace unlike any other. But where there is peace, there must also be turmoil, or chaos. Similarly, there was of course the realm known as Chaos. This would be the ultimate resting place of all Sith who failed to find a way to have their spirit live on post-mortem. It is described in Sith lore as a place of turmoil and strife maybe even torture. It is very easy to understand this place as something our world would call hell. Darth Plagueis personally didn't believe in either the netherworld nor chaos, as he was under the assumption that life essence from Force beings would transcend to become a part of the wider cosmic force upon death. Although it is worth mentioning that Plagueis didn't see the Force itself as any sort of mystical energy, and certainly didn't regard it as alive by any means. In strike contrast to the Jedi, Darth Plagueis only saw the Force from a scientific perspective, a sentiment that his apprentice Darth Sidious did not share. Sidious very much believed in these worlds and Sith spirits, as he claimed to have almost been killed by Sith spirits before from chaos. Sidious didn't care for chaos, as he thought of it as a place for Sith Lords who failed to exact revenge on those who slighted them in life, believing that it was essentially punishment for failed Sith. 
Interestingly enough, however, Sidious also detested the idea of the Mist Beyond, stating that it was weakness to pine for eternal rest, and that it was a waste of eternity. Let the weak have their peace, said Sidious. Palpatine also mentioned that there was a Naboo legend about a realm called Chaos, which was apparently blocked by a sextet of impenetrable barriers. Sidious would go on to state that it would take a strong mind to overcome Chaos, and ultimately return to the physical plane, but that the realm may not just be a place for the dark side or Sith punishment. Other mentions of Chaos refer to it as the Void. When Darth Bane used Essence Transfer as a last ditch effort against his apprentice Zana in order to overtake her body and continue living on, the book describes that he had to fight for control, for if he lost his soul, it would be forever lost to the Void. This was the risk that came with using Essence Transfer, because if your soul, or essence, failed to move into a new host, then it would be lost in the Void and forgotten. There have even been accounts of Sith Lords before that have actually managed to escape chaos, and it was even stated that Sidious' soul went there upon his final death, confirming that chaos or hell in Star Wars was very much real. However, there weren't very many details on it. At this point in time, information about the afterlife is rather scarce in both canon and legend sources. These concepts and ideas were going to be explored in depth by George Lucas in his original version of the sequel trilogy though. There also exists some leaks about the first draft of the Disney sequel trilogy that would have peeked into the netherworld, mostly showing us Ben Solo's fall to the dark side. We do know though that there are certain realms in Star Wars canon where apparently there is an afterlife, such as the realm that Vader ventured to after he was betrayed by Maumon. Unfortunately though, all the information we have on these two realms is rather limited. But Acolytes, were you wondering about a Star Wars afterlife? Drop your speculations in the comments down below. And of course, may the Force be with you, and have a great day.